a good day and welcome back to Everything Mathematics. And today I thought it would be wise to wrap up this series on matrices and simultaneous equation that we do our past paper question. And here I found this one. I think this one was May, June, 2010. And this was the very last question of that year. Remember matrices, graph matrices and something else. I can't remember. It's usually an option. It's optional. So this is under the optional part of the exam. And I thought we could just attempt it just to see if we could apply the concepts that we would have recently learned. So let's see how quickly we could get this question done. I will talk through it as I do it, of course. So that might take longer than usual. If it's just a matter of sitting down and solve this, I might finish this. I might be able, I should be able to finish this in under five minutes. No guarantee the video will be less than five minutes, it might be three times that. <laughs> let's see. All right. So the first question is say A, B, and C. Let me just scroll back a little across. Right. So that's question 14. Um, a, B, and C are matrices such that matrix A is equal to 2, 1. So this is a row matrix. Matrix B is 1, X, Y, 2. And C is another row matrix, um, 5, 6. So they told us that given that A, B is equal to C, calculate the value of X and Y. Okay, so that's a pretty straightforward question. Um, remember, um, for two matrix to be multiplied, the first thing we have to consider is the ordered pair, right? So matrix A, they told us that matrix A uh, multiplied by matrix B, that's what I mean by A, B, that's supposed to be equal to C, good? And matrix A, if we look at it right now, if we look at the order, is a two, sorry, it's a one by two, one row, two columns, good? One row, two columns. Matrix B is a two by two is a two by two. So since there's a two columns and two rows, we know that these two matrices can be multiplied. That's a given. And we know that already because they also gave us the result. But what we need to know now is that the resultant matrix is a one by two. And again, I'm just confirming facts because all this is already given. But understanding this will help us to understand how to multiply the rows and the columns to end up finding X and Y. So in essence, we have a two, a one by two multiply by a two by two, y, x, two. And this supposed to give us this resulting matrix here, five, six. And that's all we need to analyze in order to be able to calculate this. So in other words, when we multiply this row here by this column here, we will find this value here. That, that's the gist of this question here. So row by column, that will be two by one plus one by y, and that should give us five. Once we could figure that out, we'll find y, that's a simple equation we have there, we'll get y. And for x, we know that this row by this column will give us this term here, good? And once we identify that, then it's just a matter to work it out. So that will give us, two by X, so that will be two times X plus one times two. This is that two, make it, I'm almost making it look like I said, one times two, one times two, that will be equal to six. And that's it. Uh, we won't even end up with a simultaneous equation here. I'll just do it this way so that we could see what happened for each value exactly. So for Y, for Y, we will end up with two plus Y, is equal to five. Two times one is two. One times y is y, and that's equal to five. So here we could clearly see that y will be equal to three. Now, did I get that? I simply transpose these two over here. So that gave me five minus two, and five minus two, that's equal to three. Yeah, that's it. That's pretty much all there is to it. And for the second one, the second equation, I'll solve it over here. We have two times X, so that is two X plus one times two, that is two. That will be equal to six. Ah, I'm jumping the gun there. Six. Then I transpose this two over here, so that will be two X is equal to six minus two. And six minus two is the same thing as four. And then I divide here by two, and I divide here by two. So X will be equal to two. Yeah, 
And I don't like to say I find this question was rather straightforward, but when I see five marks, it also has me wondering. I don't, I'm not sure why all the marks. But yes, I guess it would have been pretty technical to decipher where, which you have to multiply to give you what result. I don't know, maybe that would have been the challenge in this question here. So here we could see that X has a value, not X, but Y has a value of three and X has a value of negative two. Not negative two, but just two. And of course, if we want, if you have time, you could always plug that back and see that you get the same values. Right, so that's it for that. Let's go on to question, well, part B of question 14 still. So here they give us that the matrix R is equal to two, one, minus one, and three. And they ask us, first of all, to show that R is not is non-singular for two marks. What do they mean when they say non-singular? Well, we need to know it is a singular matrix. A singular matrix is a matrix in which the determinant is equal to zero. So a non-singular will simply mean that if we find the, de the determinant, we should not get zero. So they ask us to show. So it's not like they we find in all. It's actually not. It's non-singular. But we just have to prove it. So let me see if I could scroll along here and do it. I'll be doing a lot of scrolling up and down. So bear with me. Uh, don't mind the markings here. This is a scan paper, so it looks like that. So they gave us matrix two. Oh, hold on. Let me go back and look at the matrix. So the matrix is two, one, minus one, and three. Two, one, minus one, and three. Uh, let me go back and make sure again. Yes, two, one, minus one. So first thing they ask us to show that it is non-singular for two max. So all we need to do is find the determinant and make sure that it is not, hold on, did they call that matrix R? Let's see. Yes, that's matrix R. So this is matrix R. So for us to prove that it is not, it is not a singular matrix, we just have to find the determinant. And remember, the determinant of R is basically the product of the leading diagonal minus the product of the minor diagonal. So that will be um, the leading diagonal here is two and three. So that's two times three. And we subtracting that from the product of the minor diagonal, which in this case is one times minus one. And clearly there we could see that we would not get zero. Two times three, that will give us six. Minus minus one, that will be plus one. Right? One times negative one is negative one. And that negative one with this negative here will make it positive. So the determinant here would be seven. And evidently, seven is not equal to zero. Seven cannot be zero. So this shows that the matrix R is a non singular matrix since the determinant is not zero. So once you could have derived this here or show that, just like that, you would have gotten your two marks. Next question they ask us is to find R inverse, R to the negative one or the inverse of R. And again, for this one, we just have to put a few things together in which you already have one. Remember for the inverse, let me just state it, R inverse would be equal to one over the determinant of R, right? And we're multiplying that by the adjoint of R. That's, that's how we find the inverse. So we already know what is the determinant. Look at it right here. We already got the determinant to be seven. So no need to go find that. And for the adjoint, remember the rule, we switch the positions of the leading diagonal and we switch the signs of the minor diagonal. So if we apply that, our inverse will simply be equal to one over seven. And we multiply that, we switch the positions here. So that will be three and two and we switch the signs here. So the positive one here will become negative one, and the negative one that was up here will become positive one. And that is our inverse. And for the purpose of this question, we could leave it like this, but because I know we have to find the answer to our um, simultaneous equation just now, I will multiply this right away. So when we just multiply the determinant here, we treat it as a scalar, we will end up with three over seven with one over seven, then minus one over seven, and then we end up with two over seven. Good. So I basically took the seven, one over seven here, and I distributed it with each term. I multiplied it by each term. And that's how I end up with the matrix below there. It's still the determinant, I'm sorry, sorry, it's still the inverse, but I just distributed the seven, one seven, right? The determinant. And I did that because, again, as I saw, I saw this question in advance. Now that I saw it, honestly, I don't know what I'm supposed to get. But yeah, when I did it earlier, 
I, when I saw it earlier, <laughs> I saw that I have to find using matrix to solve that. Right. For another two marks, we have to show that if we multiply matrix R by the inverse of the matrix, we will get the identity. And we have to remember the identity matrix is one, zero, zero, one, I think, or something like that. It doesn't matter if I have it wrong there. When I multiply matrix R by the inverse, I'm supposed to get I, which is the identity matrix. So let's quickly do that and see. It's a, it's a fact already, so we're just proving it. Well, let's say R by the inverse. So we need matrix R and we need the inverse. Let's just multiply it out and see what we get. So matrix R was 2, 1, minus 1, and 3. That was matrix R. Good. And R inverse is what we just got here. Let me just scroll up a little. This is R inverse here. So R inverse was 3 sevenths, 1 seventh, negative 1 seventh, and 2 seventh. I don't like for one, for two marks, I think this is a lot of work, but I guess we got an easy five marks earlier. <laughs> so what can we do to complain? Right, so here now we're just working out. We multiply, remember, row by column. So this would be equal to, on this side, I'm supposed to get the identity matrix when I work it out. So let me just work it out. Two by negative three, six. So that would be two times three, seven. Yes. Plus negative one times negative one times negative one, seven. So I'll just multiply, I'll simplify after. Then row, this row one by column two, that should be two times one, seven plus negative one times one seven, good? So that's that part there. Now I'll go below. Second row, first column, row one, column one. So that will be one. Oh, and by the way, if you're not sure how to multiply matrices, I do have a video up on that. So just search in, um, where did I do that? I think matrices. Look on the matrices, the playlist, and it should be in one of them. One multiply by two times seven, two over seven, sorry, plus three, multiply by negative one over seven. And then we do one times one over seven plus three times two over seven. Good. And this is the multiplication. When we finish here, ideally we're supposed to get one, zero, zero, one. That would be the identity matrix. But let us see if it actually work out to that. So let me go down one more again. Oh, no, I need this space. I have to stay up a little. Uh, come on, screen. Treat me nice. All right, good. So here now, simplifying this first one here, I will end up with, just coming down one here, two times this would end up giving me six over seven plus one times that would end up giving me uh a negative and a negative is a positive, right? So that's one over seven. That's there. Over here now, two times one over seven, that should give me two over seven plus a negative, oh no, not plus, minus. Minus, because this negative will prevail, minus one over seven, right? So two over seven plus this will be minus one over seven. And then over here, we will end up with one times three, that is three over seven plus uh, three times negative, oh, that's negative again. So that's negative one over seven. I think I made a mistake somewhere. I will double check that one just now. There's a mistake here. So that means there's a mistake here too. I'll check it because I'm not seeing the answer already. Right, so here we have three over seven minus three over seven, right? This three times this negative here will be minus three over seven. You see, I know what's supposed to happen, what's supposed to result, and I know this will not end up with the result I want. So that means I multiply wrong. One times, oh, sorry, one times one seventh is one over seven, plus we have here three times two, so that will be six over seven. All the others given the result that I expect, except this one. So let me go back to that rule. To end up with this value up here, I have to multiply row here by column here. All right, you see, I see the mistake already. So look at it. When I reach two by one over seven is two times one over seven, right? 
but then it's minus one times two over seven. But here I have minus one times one over seven. So this is supposed to be a two and not a one. As a result, when I reach here, yes, this will make more sense. One times a two, that will give me negative two and that will cancel out. Yes, that is correct. Good. From here, I will jump straight to the answer. But of course, because I'm showing you, I need you, I wanted to see the whole process. So here, notice now, when I simplify each fraction, all the denominators are the same. So this will make it very easy to compute. So six plus one, we keep the denominator, we add the numerator. So this will end up giving us seven over seven. Good. Here we have two minus two, we keep the denominator. So that will give us zero over seven. Good. Below, I think we see the pattern, zero over seven. And here we will end up with seven over seven, which is equal to indeed the identity matrix. One, zero, zero, one. Yes, seven divided by seven is one. Seven divided by seven is one. Anything divided by zero is zero. So there you go. So indeed, R multiplied by R inverse gave us I. And this is the identity matrix. For two marks, honestly, I thought that was too much work. I thought that was a lot of work for two marks. I think this is a five marks question. <laughs> the one that we have for five marks, I think that could have been a two mark question. But again, so I'm subject to opinion. And here now they ask us to use the simultaneous equation method. Sorry, use the matrix method. So that's our last question. Use the matrix method to solve the pair of simultaneous equation. Um, in case we haven't noticed, the um, matrix R. Uh, basically is the coefficient of this simultaneous equation, right? So we have two, that's x. One, that's for x below here. Minus one, that's for this y. And three is for this y here. And all we need to do is add the result, which is our constant zero and two. So remember, to solve a simultaneous equation using the matrix, basically we just have to multiply the inverse of the matrix by the constant. Good, once we get that. So in essence, if we have Remember, it's a x is equal to b. Remember, x is the coefficients. X represents your x and y, and b will represent your constant. So, in essence, to solve for x, we would have a inverse b. I wonder if it's a inverse b or b inverse a. Hmm. Let me see. In this case, b would be a. In this case, we have a. I'm just making up a, a random matrix. You see, there are ways to remember. This here is a two by one. It's two rows. All right. So it's not this way. It's the other way around. It's B multiplied by that. Yeah, no problem. I don't know what I did there. But remember, for two matrix to be multiplied, the number of columns in the first matrix must be equal to the number of columns in the next matrix. This matrix B, I know, is a, it's this matrix. It's this. It's a two row, one column. Ah, no. I mean, I had it right in the first place. Yes, I know the matrix, the inverse matrix is a two by two. So you got something like this, right? This is a two by two, the inverse matrix. This matrix is something like this. This is a two by one, two rows, one column. For these two matrix to be multiplied, and that means these two has to match up. So yes, the inverse have to come first and then this. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that's one of the ways in which I try to remember it. So I don't have to hurt my head to remember cram the formula along the formula. I just have to remember, look at the other pair and see which one is plausible to multiply. So right, so we know X is X and Y. That's the given matrix we have. The inverse, we got that already. The inverse is, ooh, I need to scroll back up, right? This is the inverse here. That's the inverse, that's R inverse. So let me write that below again. Is a Peter I couldn't copy it and paste. So R inverse will be three over seven, then we have what? Ah, my memory. Minus one, minus one. Okay. So three over seven, minus one over seven. We have two over seven, I think. And three over seven. I'm subject to correction here. Let me just look back again to make a final confirmation. It says one over seven and two over seven. So I got it wrong. So this is one over seven here and two over seven here. And this matrix here would be zero, seven. How did I get that zero, seven? Just go back to the top here. If we go back to the question. Back to the question, look at it. 
zero seven. So that's the result, and that's a constant if you want to call it so. Right, and now we could do some maths. So to find what is x and y, we basically have to multiply this matrix by this matrix, and that should be a working part. So for the first one, let's see, we will have, we will get, so remember we are multiplying a two by two by a two by one, uh, two by one, two rows, one column. So that means the resultant, the resulting matrix has to be a two by one. And a two by one looks like this matrix here, right? So the top, the row by column will give us the top, and then the second row by the column will give us the bottom. So at the top, we would have two sevenths times zero, good, plus one seventh, uh, one seventh times seven, good. And at the bottom, we will have negative one seventh times zero, Row by column, and that will be plus two, two sevenths, two sevenths times seven. Good. And this would work out to be what? For full marks, I think this one is kind of straightforward too. Thank God. All right. So anything times zero is zero. So at the top right there, we will end up with zero plus one seven times seven is seven over seven, which is the same thing as one. So that's at the top. And again here, anything multiplied by zero is zero. So we get zero plus two seven times seven will give us 14 over seven. That's one way to look at it. And 14 over seven is the same as two. Or you could just see this seven over one and you cancel the seven and you end up with two. Anyway, you look at it. So that will be one and two, meaning that X will be equal to one and Y will be equal to two using the matrix method. So yeah, this question was not too difficult. Um, had you been attempting this question, I think we just own ourselves 15 marks. This is definitely a question I would have run for if I see that in an exam. But again, with my skill set, it might be a different story too. But it's not very, it, it, it honestly was not very difficult. Some of the process, yes, was a bit longer or long, I should say, I'm not going to say. And some of the marks might seem a little unbalanced too. But all in all, I think it was a straightforward question. So yes, this will bring us to the end of today's video. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't as yet. And until then, you take care.